In this short film series, you will see experiences caught on video over the years by a simple paranormal investigator. These are his paranormal flashbacks. McPike Mansion was built by town mayor Henry Guest McPike in 1869. It sat on 15 acres on one of the highest points in Alton known as Mount Lookout. Henry was married with a couple children, was a local politician, a librarian, delved into real estate, owned a box-making company, and even operated a winemaking business from inside his cellar. And here he lived until his eventual death in 1910. Over time, the building exchanged owners and fell victim to decay and abuse. That is, until Sharon and George Ludke purchased it in 1994. Since then, they've begun restoring the mansion back to its original beauty and glory. But in 2012, it was a different story. Collected tales of ghosts, shadows, voices of children, apparitions of Mr. McPike's domestic servant Sarah and people staring back from upper windows are all some of the incredible claims to come from visitors of this mansion. Haul things to ripen up the curiosities of those who believe in ghosts and things that go bump in the night. However, these aren't just stories to be shared for the thrill of being scared. These are in fact true experiences documented by many who have passed through these halls and up these staircases. And it's what brought this team to this location in search of evidence to support these claims. In 2012, Nathan Galler assembled a group of people to form a team willing to enter and investigate this location. This was the first recorded venture into this field that he conducted, and without a doubt left him unwaveringly convinced of the existence of energies, entities and spirits that society and science won't admit to, and unadmittedly shares this world with. It is 8.58, all four walkie-talkies are dead. After they finished unpacking their gear, they started discovering some of them were drained of power. With George Ludke's help, they set up an IR camera aiming straight at the staircase just inside the front entrance in case they could catch any anomalies or apparitions. Within a few minutes, Nathan has the camera up and running. Unmanned video cameras can sometimes catch the best evidence, especially security cameras. Before the investigation begins, Mary strolls around outside the mansion randomly taking pictures up the outer wall in hopes of catching someone or something looking back from one of the elevated windows. To her surprise, she discovers something in a photo that might prove to be important. The shape of a face in the mist. A face that hints to the shape of Henry McPike's face. Could it be real? Could it be Henry? Or could it simply be an example of pareidolia? But now it was time for them to move back inside. Within the hour after setting up cameras and setting out gear, the investigation is finally underway. Nathan enters the cellar where a few others have gathered and are already establishing contact through the use of sensory devices. Because of the unsafe conditions of the above floors, access inside the building is restricted to the cellar area. Unfortunately, IR cameras cannot see LED light, which makes us unable to see the flashes from the sensory devices signifying responses as they get them. You think you can do that? It did. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. Both of them at the same time. Sir, I really appreciate that. Are you Sarah? Can you make the red flag light up? When I count to three, please make that light up and make a sound at the same second I say the number three. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. 
This is awesome. Yes, this is great. Jake. Oh my god. Yep, yeah, they like Nathan. That was definitely cool. Yeah, that was good stuff. Using the thermal scanner to check body temperatures, Mary informs each person of their readings. Just then, Nathan's K2 meter begins flashing. Oh, hi, Sarah. Oh, yeah, cool. Are you laughing with us? <laughs> and the REM pod comes alive. Nathan's 50. <laughs> Do you like Nathan? Nathan's popular. Not at work. <laughs> <laughs> It seemed like it was. Yeah. If we were to leave, do we have your permission to come back? Make that green light come on, please. K2 over here. It's lighting up, yeah. There we go. Oh. Thank you. So it's okay if we come back sometime and see you? When it's warmer? <laughs> <laughs> if there is anything that we can bring for you that, that would make you happy, just say it as loud as you can into that red light. I was earlier. I was I'm earlier, and I'm not a cold person. Um, but like my toes Like I'm cold, but it's the, it's every now and then just bone chilling chills. Do you like Mozart? We all have people, family, who have passed on. Know any of them? Like my grandpa. He was a politician. During the time you were alive. The relative Mary spoke of is her great-great-grandfather, Richard Parks Bland, who was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives in 1872. Someone Henry McPike might possibly have known or known of, back in their day, being born only 10 years before her great-great-grandfather. Do you know Richard Parks Bland? Or of him? Just then. What was that? Hello? A significant thud comes from just outside the doorway. All three men stand and go outside into the hall to find out where the sound came from in the attempt to debunk whether it was naturally created or if it was of paranormal origins. 
Along the way, an EVP is captured as the camera pans around. Ironically, a similar EVP will be captured while investigating the old South Pittsburgh Hospital three years later in 2015. As the men continue to look around, Jeremy searches in the hall and finds large boards leaning collectively against the wall. By thumping the boards together with slight force, he manages to recreate the sound. Hey. The door? Listen, point. Do it again. Does that sound like it? Kind of, but it didn't do anything. It was just a single thump. But despite discovering where it might have come from, the question still remains. What created it? For Nathan, this investigation paved the way for even more experiences to come. What were these energies responding to their questions? Were they people long deceased who once lived in our world? Could they have been our dead living again on the other side? Or were they not people at all? To seek answers, no matter how trivial, opportunities must be created, risks must be taken. To lessen your chances of encountering negative entities, you must never provoke and know when to retreat. But remember, just because they might be dead, doesn't always mean they want to hurt you. A few months later, despite feeling satisfied with their experiences, three of them decided to go back for more. But maybe we'll share that in an upcoming episode. So until then, stay safe and we'll see you in another Paranormal Flashbacks.